This is Witchbase News for Friday the 23rd of September 2022 I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week FDev publishes their financial results for 2022 there's free paint jobs with this weeks community goals the Canon Research Discord rises from the ashes and as their predicted landing zones are identified we break down everything we know about the Stargoid anomalies. If you enjoy our videos please do like and subscribe. Don't forget to click the little bell icon and turn on all notifications to ensure you see all our Elite Dangerous videos and posts and if you'd like to support our work on this channel you'll also find our Patreon linked below. With the Thursday server tick this week a new duo of community goals has gone live that sees the Empire's blue haired princess Ashling Duval paying dividends for certain rare commodities alongside wine and fish for a proposed charity gala in aid of the families and dependents of those killed in the Battle of Hip 22460. Where there's deliveries there's also nearly always pirates and a sister CG is asking for combat bonds from wanted vessels destroyed in the Seamus system where the deliveries are headed. Whilst both CGs are paying the usual credit rewards they are also offering up paint jobs for participation with the delivery CG granting paint jobs for the Dolphin, Orca and Beluga for the participants in the top 75%, 50% and 25% respectively and the Combat CG is offering a Python paint job for the top 75% of participants. As always the CG will run until next Thursday unless its goals are met before then. For more details see the link in the video description below. And while we're on the subject of paint jobs it was announced in a forum post headlined wonderfully as coming from Sally's Space Swag Emporium that a set of 6 shiny new metallic commodity galvanised paint jobs for the Scorpion SRV have arrived on the ARC store this morning some of which you can see on screen now for 1820 ARCs each. There's also a set of 6 expressway themed paint jobs for the Orca on the ARC store which are great as well but not shiny and metallic or on a scorpion. Bus or shiny speedy murdery space tank I'll leave it up to you. Frontier Developments published their financial results for 2022 to the London stock market this week with the company recording a second consecutive year of record revenue. We saw this forecast in a trading update back in June however the annual results published this week take a slightly deeper look at the company's existing stable of titles and overall these continue to perform well and are delivering revenue and performance in line with expectations. The report goes on to break down the company's financial dealings and mentions in a number of places what they refer to as the amortisation of Elite Dangerous Odyssey. This was again already known about in June and in layman's terms it means that due to lower than expected sales from Odyssey and the cancellation of the console version the revenue that would have offset the development costs of the title is now lower than expected and not predicted to be achieved in a timely enough manner. The company is therefore essentially writing off that debt and drawing a line under it during this financial year. As we've previously reported FDev already declared this back in June as a prudent decision for the company to make. Rounding off their comments on Elite Dangerous the company does state that the decision to cancel console development was a difficult one but they are now focusing on supporting and growing their Elite Dangerous player community with a focus on the games narrative during the rest of this financial year. On the subject of that narrative as the games senior producer Samantha Marsh said last month quote bad things are coming unquote and Samantha also stated that as they move towards update 14 the Thargoid threat will be escalating to a degree that commanders have not seen before. Further promising the galaxy won't be the same afterwards. We are seeing that narrative focus bearing fruit in game already as the community watches the approach of the Stargoids and the anticipated update to the game arriving in November. More on that in a moment. 
If you want to check out the full financial report yourself I've linked to it in the description below this video. The Canon Research Discord server returned to normal operations this week after a significant security breach last week saw its content decimated and taken offline. The significant science contribution the organisation makes to the games larger community never ceased as temporary operations were quickly established in a pre-existing second Discord server that the player group maintains to feed alerts and other information to the games populace but this week saw a reforging of the new main Canon Gnosis Discord. The Canon leadership have wisely taken the opportunity to turn what was initially a negative situation into a positive one however as the reforging of the Gnosis server sees it return with not only stronger security measures in place but also a new ethos and opportunity for those joining the server. What the team are calling a glass wall policy has been implemented in the rebuilding process meaning that anyone joining the Discord server will now be able to see what is being discussed in any of the Discord servers many laboratories. In order to participate and contribute to those investigations however you need to be a fully signed up member of Canon by signing up via the Canon website. There are however now also public discussion channels in the Discord for those that just wish to peer in through the glass and talk about what they see or ask questions greatly helping with the dissemination of the information that Canon gathers. To join the new reforged Canon server you'll find a link in the video description below. And whilst we're talking about science and the uncovering of new things the Stargoid interstellar anomalies that we reported on a few weeks back are still being tracked and reported on by commanders and their movement and behaviour has now been observed and recorded long enough and by so many that we can now report on what they appear to be doing and importantly what you can expect to see and find in the space surrounding them as they continue to make their way in the general direction of the bubble. There are now it seems 3 of the unknown interstellar anomalies or stargoids as they've become known heading towards the bubble. Their predicted path based on previous observations you can see on screen now plotted in the Canon UIA tracker which you'll find linked in the description below. Whilst their predicted paths do all converge on Sol those paths also take them very close to HIP 22460 which you can see shown in green here as well as the 3 systems in the bubble that were recently invaded by Thargoids shown in orange. Further the 3 systems shown in red are permit locked by the pilots federation and those permit locks are currently unavailable to commanders. Ordinarily as they travel from system to system the Stargoids have a number of effects that move with them. As a Stargoid is moving through a system that system will spawn threat 0 degraded emissions that contain destroyed vessels and cargo containers that house caches of survey data. Currently those caches appear to have no intrinsic value. In Supercruise Stargoids 2 and 3 also exhibit rogue signal sources. When approached these signal sources appear as green gas clouds. If commanders drop into them the signal sources appear empty. There is a bubble of some 25 light years around the Stargoids movement that is extremely prone to high prediction from Thargoid interceptors. If you're jumping out from the Stargoids current system then those high predictions are almost always immediately aggressive so if you are high predicted in the region be prepared to immediately boost while dropping heat sinks to mask your signature. In the last 24 hours as I speak these words the Thargoids have changed the pattern of their behaviour somewhat. Normally there would be a midpoint in the Stargoids transition between two systems. Currently 2 of the 3 Stargoids have not reached that midpoint and are apparently sailing off into interstellar space instead leaving all the expected signage of their arrival behind. Observations are continuing on the third Stargoid to see if that pattern is repeated. It's not yet known if this is expected behaviour or as the result of a bug. Reddit user Aranea is currently producing a useful weekly update on the status of the anomalies and where they can be found together with tracks of their predicted paths. I've linked to that below in case you're interested in tracking these things down for yourself. 
As things stand it is unknown currently where the Stargoid anomalies will stop if indeed they do intend to stop at all. It's also unknown what they contain or what their specific intentions are. We can say however with some small degree of certainty that based on their observed movement patterns they will likely arrive in the vicinity of the bubble around the end of October or beginning of November. Just in time for the next expected significant patch to the game ...update 14. It seems likely then that whatever the Stargoids are will drop with that patch. Are you joining in with this weeks community goal? Will you be chasing down the Stargoids yourself and where do you think they're heading? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then ….o7 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time. 